<laughs> Rhubarb was a very good cider they were offering here today. Was it? Is that, yes. is that my first question, is it? No, it wasn't, but you said rhubarb, so we I have to was, go with was that. It, was it Henry Weston's uh, rhubarb, was it? No, it was... Other brands um, are available. Other brands are available. This was uh, <laughs> some <laughs> pig. <a> cider at the... <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, right. Where yes. were we? <clears throat> yeah. Um, that was one hell of an intense gig tonight. Aside from melting on stage, how was it for you? Oh, it was great. It's really nice to be out gigging at all, to yeah. be honest, um, after these crazy times. Yeah. But we kept our hand in and done, I don't know, about half a dozen, a dozen gigs here and there, mm. you know. We've done some touring and we went to Croatia last year. That was great. Mm. Well, we've been writing a new album, so yeah. we're, we're very productive as a band. Yeah. You're preempting my questions. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there yeah, you so are. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, we've done all that. Uh, is that enough? Right, okay, bye. Um, <laughs> you nice got to that meet drive. you. Um, nice to meet you. Have a good drive back. <laughs> yeah, the gig um, was fabulous. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was a privilege was to come. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because about 25 years ago, we were booked to play in York. And... Uh, I was unfortunately detained at Her Majesty's Pleasure on that particular weekend. Um, so I spent all weekend in Catford, Nick. And um, so obviously I couldn't get to York. Plus um, the helicopter was getting an MOT that weekend. So it was, it was tricky, tricky, tricky. <laughs> yeah, one. you got to watch it with those helicopter MOTs. Yeah, you, know. Yeah, you do. And, and also, although we specify a helicopter landing pad on the rider, it's not always provided, which is something we're going to have to have words about, really. <laughs> yes, they didn't have that for this gig, no, I take didn't. it. No, they didn't. And I'm, you know... They're not coming back. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely <laughs> disappointed because in every other way, it was a fantastic gig, lovely crew. Um, brilliant the helicopter food they pack. cooked for everybody, for the mm -hmm. bands and the crew. They were just so welcoming, the, the collective. And, um, yeah, and the crowd were brilliant. It was just great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I get, I, it's so nice to hear that. Um, that you come to a gig and it's not just, yeah, we get up on stage and we do our thing and we go. You felt like you were welcomed in. So Absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's brilliant. And um, we used to come up north a bit more back in, you know, back in the past. Um, but it's somewhere that we haven't really, you know, we, we haven't spent as much time up, up north in recent, yeah. well, obviously no one spent any time anywhere in recent <laughs> years. years yeah. But, um, so yeah, for that reason, it's really nice to come up and also to kind of uh, to finally actually turn up and play York without being under arrest. <laughs> yes, and saying you're not in the neck. That yeah. was a good thing. So, um, but yeah, no, it's great. And w whenever we do get up north, we always get shown really good hospitality up mm. up north. Actually, well, it's uh, time for all the people as well because we've seen a lot of old faces, a lot of new faces. Yeah. Uh, we're all about the people as well, so yeah. you know we're happy to sit and, and chat with the people that come to the gig and all the promoters and everybody involved yeah. essentially, you know, yeah. so it's great fun. Yeah. And also to catch up with people that have seen you. Some guy came up to me this evening and said, well, look, you know, I've been following you for 20 years. You changed my life. It's a, an honor to hear that. You know? yeah. 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 But you've been going for nearly 30. Was it 28, 29? 28, it'd be 29 next February, wasn't it? Yeah. So, no, no, if you'd have just murdered a stranger in the street, right, <laughs> you'd be out of Broadmoor by now. <laughs> so, uh, to get, just to put it in context. Well, I'm not even 26. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I, I knew you weren't an original member. No, we... we, we, we yeah, got, no, a founding member from We, we, we yeah. got sold him when he was a baby. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. We, we were out on tour. Got a cow print in my, uh, yeah. my tram stand with our inner terrestrial. This, this, yeah. Yeah, this, this white transit turned up, um, pulled up next to a set of services outside Montpellier, um, sold as a, a, a knocked off generator, and they uh, had a baby for sale as well. So that's where we that's where we bought Ben. Grow your own So, you know, yeah. 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 We've had him growing up in a, in a <laughs> hole in the ground um, until he was ready to start gigging when he was 17. <laughs> so, Did you give him his first set of drumsticks? Actually, the way it happened was that he turned up at, a, at an audition when he was 17, having learnt an entire album, and, and basically just passed, passed with flying colours, you know, that was it. So he was, you know, uh, in a long line of people, but he, he arrived and, and said, look, I'd like a piece of this, and mm -hmm. he was he made the grade. Because, of course, you've got, you're looking at five or six genres of music in our yeah. set. It's not one thing or another, it's, exactly. it's covering all bases. 
So essentially, you know, it's very hard to find a great drummer that can play across the board. Yeah. You know, some guys are fantastic at punk, some guys are fantastic at reggae, you know, and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. But yeah. yeah. But ben could do it. can switch it up. That's and, it. And yeah. Ben could. And that was that was essentially how he joined the band, really. That's essentially how he started his sentence. <laughs> yeah. Um and now there's nearly no way out, really. Well, I think it's been nearly eight years. Seven or eight years. That would have been actually at Catford uh Catford Hall, we, you know, <laughs> like 25 years ago when you were supposed to play York, that was where I was, where I began my sentence. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Figure out. Anyway, next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, that actually threw me. I've lost the next question that I had in my head. Get it together. Come on. Yeah. What's up with this? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing I have noticed is... You have some of the happiest demeanor, but also some of the happiest music with some of the most serious lyrics and the serious subjects. How do you reconcile the two? How do you make it really fun to be talking about fascists? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's little in this life that's more fun than fascism, let's face it. I was a laugh a minute, isn't it? You know, um, I mean... Um, the thing is this, is that I'm very serious. I'm a very serious brother, actually. Um, but at the same time, you, you you know, you've got to be able to have a laugh. And um, and also, you've got to have some up full energy. Nihilism's no good, right? I've never been... See, the punk kind of thing, I've been a punk a long, long time. And I'm knocking on a bit now. And there was a lot of nihilists around at different phases through the punk yeah. kind of... Different punk eras, you know. And um, and I've buried a lot of I've buried a lot of mates, a lot of mates in the twenties, thirties, as kind of something that follows on from that ideology. And I, I I just I always well, there are there is a reason to fight if everything's fucked, which is just to resist the bully. Yeah. For that reason alone, it's worth fighting back. Yeah. However, I've just always felt that um, other worlds are possible, and that we can have positive change. And we can work towards it while resisting the bullies. It's, it's, it's extremely, it's a ridiculous task considering how the world actually is. But it's not impossible. And so I've always hold, held on to that. And these guys are, are kind of on the same page with that. You know, like, <clears throat> we want to make people dance and, like, have a good time. There's no point all moping around, you know, everything's fucked, let's all mope around and whinge about it. Yeah, there's an element of that. We've got, we got to rail back against what we're dealing with. But at the same time, let's fire up some positivity. Let's move forward. Let's fucking have it. You know, let's try and bounce forward against this stuff with what, you know, pitiful little resources we've got. What we've got is our hearts. That's you know, not pitiful. You know, no, it's not. But, you know, we don't have armies and stuff yeah. like that. So... Um, and if we did, we'd be playing the same game as them. It'd all end up the same anyway. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, that that's why really it's like always up for, always up for, always trying to be like pushing forward to the positive. Also, getting angry and railing back against the bully and the, the, the terror we're subjected to, but at the same time, always being mindful of the fact that another world is possible. Let's push positively towards it. Basically, I love that attitude. Because it's one thing to be angry, and I think we're all angry about a lot of things going on in the world, but be positive about how we can change it and how we can fix it and sure. make a difference in the world. Sure. Yeah. How about you? Have you always agreed with that ideology? Uh, the the ideology, the, well, the positive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, wanting to make a change in the world. Well, you know, I th I think a, I think a fight is about community. I think a fight is about well, you know, community essentially break it down. It means common unity. And if you are united in your fight, then you have friends and you have people that you are that that, that agree with you and that you know that are gonna are gonna essentially support you and have your back if it gets tricky for you. If you you know if if you lose a bit of momentum or if you get hit down by the bullies or if you you know. Having, knowing that there are other people there who support you and who will dance with you through the good times and the bad makes it easier to fight that fight. So, um, and it's it's hard to make friends if you're just low and sad all the time. I don't. Obviously, we can all be low and sad. I, I should choose my words more carefully. But 
um, you know, if you're if you're down about your your trajectory all the time, then um, it's hard to find other people who are going to support your cause. So yeah. be positive and create art and make people make get get people on your side in whatever positive way you can. Gosh, I love this. I'm ending the day on such a positive, upbeat note. This is really lovely, to be honest. It's five to twelve, so you know, it's oh, a genuinely it's ending the day. day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a perfect ending to the day. Yeah. And you guys have about a six-hour drive home. Well, in that van, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 1977 Leyland Sherpa. That's yours out well, there. Well, no, that's, that's our very good brother, Risky Rich. Um, he's famous from here to Warsaw and beyond mm-hmm. as being a, a punk band driver. Okay. Um, and uh, he's, I mean... He started driving us around the eastern countries uh, about... Mid-90s? Yeah, about the mid nineties, wow. ninety five, ninety six. Yeah. He took us on our first tour to Poland, yeah. um, when it was it had not long been perestroika and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So um, it was, and you still had, you had to cross the razor wire and the machine guns over the German border and all the yeah. dogs. It wasn't you know, it was all this big deal. They wanted to know everything you had in the van in case you were trying to import stuff from the west to sell. Or oh, gosh. You know, it was all like. Um, and uh, yeah, he started driving driving us around in those days, in a, in a and, and that was in a rusty old transit with a, with a wheel bearing that was on the fritz. Um, oh but um, yeah, so we go back a long way with with Risky. He's a, he's a, he's a very good brother of ours. But what what's amazing about him is that he supports all the upcoming bands, all the young bands, all bands that have got that aren't getting paid mm. and who just want to do gigs. He'll go and he'll go and smoke him around the country in his old bands, you know. And um, he's seventy three now. Risky. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks about fifty. Looks about 50. Yeah, but... He's more useful than most. Well, he's more useful than any thirty year old these days, I would say. <laughs> but um, I do things with him sometimes. You know, he comes down to my yard. I live in I live in Gloucestershire, and uh, he comes down to my yard, and we pull engines out of trucks. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not into mechanics, but I just do it because I love him. Yeah. I hate mechanics, but I like if he comes down, you know, I'll help him do it. He can lie around under motors, he's helped he helps me fix my so anyway, that's risky. He's uh he's cut from a different cloth to well to any he's to anyone <laughs> basically. Yeah. He's one of the superhumans. But um he sounds it. But he's uh he's he's such a wicked guy. He's the most useful man I know. So it's his van and he's got a fleet of uh of vintage vehicles that are all kind of tax and MOT exempt. He fixes them all himself and um Keeps them running and keeps and he the keeps bands them running. running. Well, he also keeps the punk scene running. That's what he I does. mean. Single-handedly, you know. Yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. Driving, he's driving all the bands, all our friends' bands around. He's, do, you know, when he's available. But, you know, like I said, bands who haven't got a name for themselves and um, and stuff like that yet and aren't getting, you know, aren't putting the crowd or whatever. They're keen to get out and do gigs and not be getting, getting paid anything. He just goes out and, and does it. Takes them all over the place. Takes them to Europe, even if they want. So that's, yeah, that's how we're traveling at the moment. We roll risk. I like that. Another positive story to end with, but I will let you get on your journey because I know how long of a drive that is, and it's not at midnight. Ah, uh, it's, it's yeah. not too bad. It's a, no. it's a, I mean, it's a mere trifle. When you, you know, when you're on tour in Europe or somewhere oh, yeah, like that, you know, every, you're, you're expecting the six or seven hour drive every day. Exactly. So yeah. we're very used to it. Yeah, you know? Warsaw we'll, we'll to London with uh, the power steering gone on a oh, on a my. on a tour bus. What was that? 20, 27 hours, was it? Imagine at least. 32, yeah. Yeah, 32 sounds about more, right? Oh, wow. Well, you must have some real stories about we going do, on we tour. Do, we do, we do. We've got too, too many stories. Yeah, we could. We could. We chew your ear off. Comfortable in my car. Yeah, you weren't in on that one then, I guess, the 32-hour journey. No, I don't, even, I don't even know if he was in a cot by then. Yeah. How long ago was that? Just about. Just about. 99, maybe? No. <laughs> Don't worry about where you were. Forget about that. <laughs> Something's the best left. Well alone. Yeah, on that note. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to meet you. And yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you all very, very much. Have a safe journey home. And I hope to see you guys up north again soon. Yeah, we hope to be back up north again soon. Yeah. Northern hospitality is very hard to beat, I have to say, actually. We try. Yeah, and you <laughs> succeed. So cheers. Thank cheers you. to the North. 
Thank <laughs> you.